allow AI already. He just did a hair transplant and showed me the beautiful hairstyle. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for uh, coming to this session. Uh, I, I thought I'd be talking to Yaki uh, all, but uh, I'm very glad it's back. So what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to give a very short talk, uh, less than 10 minutes, about the importance of AI and how do you choose in your projects. Is it worthy to have AI or not? Uh, let's begin. So I'm going to ask the question which is uh, at some point in our lives, right, we would have thought, hey, you know what, I wish I had this superpower. It could be like I want to go invisible or I want to time travel, mind predict people, whatever it is. How many of you here wished that you could predict the future? A quick show of hands. How cool would it be if you knew what's going to happen tomorrow, today, we start preparing for that? Right? How cool would it be if you can just know that there's something going to come in the technological world and shake up the entire uh, platform? So that you can start preparing for it and you are beforehand ready for that new transformation. Uh, luckily, that is not really far fetched, and there's a lot of tools today which already lets you do that at some extent. One such tool is called as the Gartner's High Cycle, which I'm sure many of you in this audience would have heard about it or already using in your career for a large extent. Uh, this curve is very simple. It is what it does is it has five phases in the line. Depending on where a technology is plotted in this graph, it tells you whether the technology will be going mainstream in the market or will it get obsolete. Uh, this is how the curve looks like. I would like you to just go read about it more later on after this call. It's very interesting, very powerful, and it's directly put into your work. So, this is an example of a curve where you have all those dots, each one represents a different technology. What's interesting here is for the last five to six years, there has been one technology which has been a regular, uh, you know, uh, technology has been plotted in this curve. No guesses, uh, I mean, no price for the guesses, it's actually the AI. So the idea here is, last year, not once, but twice the AI was mentioned here. Generative AI and causal AI was mentioned twice, which means that that curve has been plotted with a dark blue color. Which stands for, I'm sure people in the back can't see it, what the line last time says that it's 5 to 10 years, which means AI will go mainstream in the next 5 to 10 years, right? Where most of our audience will have some kind of a direct reach to it. So, long story short, the key takeaway here is whether you like it or not, AI is here to stay. Okay, fine, so AI is here to stay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? There is this debate that's going on slightly for quite some time now where one set of people believe that. AI is evil, it's destructive, it's going to take away all your jobs. In the other realm, we have people who think that it's just a buzzword, right? Like IoT and similar cars, it's going to be there, but it's going to come to the same market. But what I believe in is that it's going to be a middle ground where, of course, AI can't do everything, at least right now, but in the near future, it's going to transform industries. The word that's important here is transform, because for you and I as designers, we need to upskill, adapt to this new, certain future. But there's always a the catch, right? So just because AI is trending, it's a buzzword, it's going to be the next big thing in the world, doesn't mean that AI is be put in every goddamn solution, right? Don't force AI into places where it truly really does not belong. So this brings up another question, which is, hey, how do I even know whether my product needs AI or not? We're going to spend the next few minutes understanding this question, all right? For that, let's take a case study. Where the problem statement is, let's take elderly uh, people as a target users, and they have difficulty keeping up with latest news and events because they don't have access to genuine, honest, trustworthy uh, news and articles because of which they feel isolated and they feel they are misinformed. So if we are designers trying to solve this problem statement, how do we do that? So let's say I just do a quick workshop and we spend a couple of hours and you generate some very obvious ideas and you put them into two buckets. One solution with AI and one solution without AI. And let's see how that would look like. The first theme, let me take as personalization. So here, one very obvious thing you could do is, uh, you could ask elderly people for certain uh, chosen areas of interest and you could give news feed specific to those areas of interest. Right? And a solution without AI 
does this on a Christian with AI, what it can do is probably a step ahead where it can do what's called adaptive personalization. Sorry, there's a bit of pollution here. I wish the AI could solve this problem, but I guess it's some time. Awesome. So with AI, now we can do what's called as an adaptive personalization where you know the user has not chosen the area of interest. It can understand reading habits and give you a possible uh, news article which you might love. Right? Now let's take a second theme which is localization. Without AI, just to kind of have a better reach and a more immersive experience, you could have this local language support. Now with AI, obviously you can do this, but it can also do a lot more which is you can curate summaries of long articles, you can do language translation and a lot more with AI. Let's take one more thing, the last one, which is how do you address isolation? So without AI, today many people do this already in apps where you have some kind of a plugin which lets you give access to latest events and uh, community activity that's happening around you based on user's location. Where the user can go out and make networks, bonds, etc. Now with AI, we can do this, but you can do something more, which is the AI can act like a digital companion, where if they give you a news article, you can converse with it, you can have a chat over it, and the solution becomes like a company of sorts for you. And what it can also do is uh, information filtering. Uh, Rajat, before we just mentioned that, uh, you know, we have certain movies which are a little depressing, they're traumatic. So let's say if you want to kind of keep in mind the mental health and wellness of the elderly person, so we can filter out information which can give potential harm to them. So we just give motivating, uplifting uh, articles which kind of improves the mental health of you know, uh, breaking that. Now having seen this, what we can realize is that the same problem statement can be solved with AI and without AI, right? With AI, obviously it was more smarter, better and more accurate, but without AI it didn't do a bad job all too bad. Because the same core user needs was actually met with both these approaches. Now this brings a million dollar question. So when do I decide that my problem statement truly needs AI or it's better off without it? The law, sorry. So the key answer to this is it all depends on your project goals. Right? The more elaborate answer would be these three aspects of your project goals is what determines whether your AI solution is needed or not. First is cost. How many of you knew this about this Google article which went live last week where uh, it was about OpenAI and Microsoft literally spends five to six crore rupees in Indian currency for just keeping chat GPT running for one single day. AI yeah, is expensive. From monetary point of view, not just monetary, but from resources point of view. Getting hold of developers and entrepreneurs who are really up at AI is still scarce and very, very costly. And lastly, data. To get accurate AI related data, you need a huge training model of high quality. How do you make sure you get that quality data, which is right now going to be very expensive? And the next thing is user needs. Once, let's say, you have answer the cost related things and you're sure that your bird can afford it. The next key question is user needs. If you create a solution which is AI back, are you sure that AI solution can have a better performance or efficiency or overall user experience? Are you sure that this will happen with AI and a non-AI solution cannot do this? Something to throw about. And lastly, security is a huge, huge concern about privacy being at stake when you have AI in your solution. So how do you make sure that you as a designer can take care of that? You as a designer can make sure that there is no misinformation happening because of wrong trained AI data. And how do you make sure whatever AI solution you present to the user, you are transparent about it. You also tell how that AI solution was bought in the first place. And lastly, bias. How do you make sure that you don't have any kind of cultural or gender bias creeping into your solution? Right. So I'll just give one quick example here also. A few months back, there was this small girl from an African country who went to an AI solution and typed, Hey, show me uh, women leaders who have reached top of the ladder in technological field. Unfortunately, the AI result was all women of fair skin uh, ladies. Right? So that made the small girl believe that you had to be fair skin to get a work in your career. How destructive can AI be if you don't take care of these uh, concerns? Right? Uh, so, the summary of my talk here is if you want to make sure that you have to be confident that you should have AI in a solution or not, make sure that you answer these three 
critical aspects. And the answers to these three are resounding yes, then the probability that your solution would benefit with AI is extremely high. If not, you might as well better off with a solution which is not having AI. That was my key idea I wanted to share with all of you. Hope you liked it. And my name is Chudikra Magni. If you want to have a chat, discuss more, I'm here until 6 p.m. today. That's a curfew time. And we can talk more. Thank you so much. I'm told that in the interest of time, we can have one question if anybody has. And, uh, we'll discuss more. Yes. A lot of good talk. Uh, so one question I had was that you had mentioned that AI is here to stay and you showed these three parameters on which we should be judging. So cost is something on which it's easy to get agreement across stakeholders. I mean obviously everyone relates that if there's no money obviously they will not do it. How about the rest of the two when you're in the room and probably not everyone is in the interest of maybe security or maybe long-term effects and like the African girl you mentioned. I mean, these are ethical things and ethics is subjective in, to some extent. Like, it should not be ideally, but how to navigate that if we are in the room? Very good question. But uh, yeah, if you are in a room which has these concepts raised, a strong way where you're not able to kind of rationalize to what you're seeing, you're probably the wrong one, first of all. Right? And as designers, it's our duty to make sure that we take care of ethical designs. Right? Uh, if they can't understand the value of it in the first go, if we show you a quick prototype or having a quick display of research and pointing them the tip of the iceberg of how diversity can be, can probably help. So there's already enough articles out there in the internet which tells you that one wrong move can make AI an evil thing. Right? So probably those examples can further feed into your audience. Alright, thank you so much for the lovely audience and I'm um, <laughs>